Hey guys, it's Dana and it's time for another DIY. This time I'm going to be doing a walk-in closet. It is going to be fabulous. The before and after is drastic. I've already begun. I cannot believe the stuff I had in my closet and that I have not taken it out and gone through everything. I really thought I was keeping a better closet than I was. Um, so I decided months ago I wanted to redo my closet. It was a mess. We've built our house and um, it's relatively new, but just in September, I they were doing something up the street and my neighbor across the street and I both had our closets collapse. Well, that has been absolutely insane for me um, because I had to pick out of piles and that doesn't work. So I took a long time deciding who I wanted to work with whenever I did this rebuild, and I can't wait to reveal that as well. I'll be showing you the before and after. So now that you know all of that, I wanna show you today what I'm using for the starting pieces because there's a lot involved. First, after you empty the closet, you're going to have wall repair. You have to take down any existing fixtures. Everything needs painted, which means taping and cleaning. Our carpet's coming up because I'm replacing the whole house with wood floors, um, and in addition, I have to clean all of this. So I've partnered up and I'm going to show you with who, and I'm going to show you a way to never need electric whenever you vacuum again. All right, so this is the mess I was telling you about. You, I just have replaced the lighting so that it is like department store. It's an LED flat panel. I love it. It will burn for eons. You can see I still have a couple hooks on the existing support beams. They need to come down. I have taken down the racks using my tools. Got a brand new Hoover cordless vacuum. Now this thing is incredible. It's high capacity, has tools on board. And the thing that I love is I mentioned that it is cordless. Um, you know, do you see any electrical plates in here? No. And if you travel out to my bedroom, the closest one is not for a little while, so I would have to pull up extension cords in order to make this work. This was the one part I never really, really thought through. So I need something that I can work with in here and not worry about electric, and that's exactly what I had. This is my high capacity wet and dry utility vacuum. It is a Hoover one power system and it is cordless and we'll go right to the cordless. Here is your battery. When it ships, it'll come with one little light on showing that it has just barely charged. They can only ship it that way. You have to charge it when it comes in. Therefore, it will take about three hours to get that light to go fully charged. If you wanna ever know how the charging is, you'll just touch this button so that you know the front from the back. This should always line up with your tools. If not, the top will not go on. This is a flexible seven foot hose. You have your two attachments, I'll go into that further, and your two tools that do come included with it. This is used for when you empty from either side, when you open up and empty so you can tip into the garbage can. This has a clip so that you know it is attached. It does make a snap. You can see how easily the wheels are moving. They're 360 degree mobility. And this is easy to get in and out. Now, let's talk about whenever you're on the inside of here and using it on the outside. I will show you that shortly. You have a dry filter on the inside. That dry filter cannot be used when you're using water. So you do need to go in and remove it. At that point in time, I would suggest dumping all the other debris and starting fresh so that you don't have gunky, dirty debris coming out. Um, so you take out the dry filter. Whenever you're working with wet, you put it in when you're working with dry. It is very light to move. Um, I will tell you, it has a six gallon capacity. And I will show you that it's just effortless. It's very light. Okay, so just so you're not worrying that these are gonna lose elasticity, these are bungee cords, and one relies on the other. So as you can see, if I pull on one side, the other one tightens, which makes this fabulous. So once you slide this right through the hole to go back to the onboard hose dock, um, and your, your pole wand, your wands here, your extension wands, it just goes right in like that. It's really almost one-handed. It could be when you pull out, but when you put in, you have to actually stretch the bands. So that's easy. On and off is right here. These 
are my tools and they simply slide in here. The band is tight enough, it doesn't need to be changed. You just drop them on in. This has a clip on it so that it's very easy to, and so you know it's on secure when you hear the click. And uh, I can't do this one handed so just you can trust, there it is. Um, and that, your power button is in the back, it's on off here. And you should line that up with where you attach the hose, just so you know, or this will not lock into place because of positioning. So again, line this up with where the hose connects and you'll be in good shape. The battery will lead the way and it will be close to your, um, your tools and your tool release. So all the cleaning wands up front. This is the inside cylinder of my high capacity wet and dry utility vacuum from Hoover. It is the one power system, meaning it's cordless, so it has the rechargeable battery, which we've already taken a look at. I wanted to open it up and let you see the inside, and I wanted to make a few other comments. wheels. They're 360 degrees of mobility, which is perfect, and I showed you how they move around. The latches are really easy to undo. Use the handle over here in order to dump it whenever you're emptying it, and this is a seven-foot extendable hose, which is perfect for most jobs. So I will be using this inside and outside, practically anywhere I go from the car into the home. The only thing I will do is probably wipe off the wheels so that I don't have dirt tracking through the house. <laughs> 